Hello everybody, welcome to Bikes and Engines. In this episode we're going to be rebuilding the carburettors and also we're going to put on some new pistons and we're going to hone out the block as well. And I think that's all we'll get on to today, so enjoy. So I've got some carburettor cleaner and some lint three in pre cloths. I'm hoping this won't melt the um the foam it sat on. I'll just give the outside a bit of a clean up first. It's not quite as disgusting. It's very sticky. got one of these jobbies so it's just like a little pokey tool got lots of little proddy bits on it Oh, there's nothing actually blocked. There's just a little bit of gasket material left on these, so I'll scrape that off with a scalpel or a uh, standing knife blade, sorry. But all in all, these look to be in very good condition. It actually had no blockages at all. They're a bit sticky on the outside, but that's about it. So I'll go and fetch the gasket kit and show you putting this back together it's exactly the same on the other two carbs so I won't bore you with going through that but it's all very simple and I'll show you the book showing the measurements on these valves on the float chambers I can't think of a proper word control jets or whatever and um, we'll check the tolerances are correct on those. Put it all back together. Yeah, I'm pleased with that apart from the um, connecting rod it came with. So I'll grab the rebuild kit and show you it going back together. Float lead for adjustment. So you have to measure this with uh, vernier calipers, which I've just done, and mine are all in spec. It's quite fiddly to do. I couldn't hold the camera at the same time. So that's with it in a closed position. 
and that's with it in the open position. So that's these little jimmies here. So I've got this little gasket set here. Just took off that fibre washer, replaced it from a new one. So I think I'll put him in first. I won't go mega tight because it's all just brass and aluminium and I expect this aluminium's probably a bit soft. This one goes down in here. And you can see, try to get that to focus. Well, I, it goes down to a nice point without a step on the shoulders. If it's got a little step, you know it's worn out. So that's the idle mixture screw. And should have counted the adjustment before I took it out, but you screw it all the way in, then back it out a certain amount. I mean, one and a half turns, is, or one and a quarter turns is pretty common, so I'll just go half, one, and a half, and I'll check to see what it is on the other carburetor. So that's half, one, half, two, Half, one, half. Two, and tighten it up a bit. So these were about two turns, so I'll just back this out another half turn, because that's what they're on. Now we can have a little look Inside the top of these float chambers, there's a filter inside these. Let's get those little screws out of the way. See how much crap's in the filter. Nothing. Very clean. So I'll just give these a clean out in the um, gasket kit. It's got new cork gaskets for the top and bottom of the filter.
I had to find a screwdriver which I can use to um, pry out the old the old cork gasket. So I want to be a bit careful not to damage the aluminium. This looks like it's been there in a long time and I don't want to bend these out of sync either. There we go. So, there's the old gaskets. Sorry about the background noise. Um, we're just in a poly tunnel and when it starts raining, obviously it gets, uh, gets a bit noisy in here. So, these are the replacements. Also, I back sprayed some, some hard cleaner through there, it's a really fine mesh, but it looked pretty clean anyway. So, little one goes up in the filter chamber, pop in the filter chamber. Loud, put it down so it's seated. Put the old one back in, so come out. Okay, so old one, new one. Which feels to be not a very good fit. Actually, it's a bit, a bit bigger. It's gone in there, right? So I just cleaned that out before I get a new bit of cloth. goes together like that. There was a bolt holding them together which I seem to have lost. I hope you can hear me over a rain. 
I'll try and speak a bit louder. I won't tighten this up yet because that will have to twist about a little bit. So I don't know if you can hear me, but the rain's really going for it now. So. I'll just take you out to see some of the nice English weather. It's hail. So I think I'm going to come back to this video a little bit later. If you can hear me. We've got out and put back together now. I've just put this choke assembly on temporarily so I don't lose the bits. They were all very clean and actually didn't need too much. All I actually had to change were these cork gaskets which go in the filter on the uh, filter which is just before the float chamber and these fibre washers which went on this bit here, a little access port. Those gaskets were for between there, but the gaskets on here, they're intact and look good. And they were, they looked a bit stuck on this side. So I just left, left well alone and cleaned them up and put them back together. There is some little nylon washers. I'm not sure where they were supposed to go because they didn't come out at all when I, when I was disassembling it. So I'm not sure what they're for. Maybe this carburetor kit covers more carburetors. There's a little copper, copper crush washer. I suspect that's from one of the jets that I didn't actually remove. But otherwise, yeah, they look good. Came up nicely, nice and clean now, inside and out. They should work well, hopefully. I'll just show you quickly some of the progress on the outboard. So, I'm trying to get a good light. Repainted this. It's not perfect. If you get up close, you can see. I probably should have sanded out with scratches, but I did a couple of coats of spray paint and a few coats of clear. So it's come out very nice and glossy and from a little way away it looks amazing. You're getting real close, it's not perfect. But it's a thousand times better than it was. Actually, I think the lens might be a bit dirty. Hold on, I'll give it a clean. No, it was alright. There you go. So yeah, that's looking pretty good. Also, I polished up the engine cowling. It's made the dents show up a little bit more, but I just went over it with 1200 grit wet and dry, and then used the uh, electric polisher with some metal polish. That looks really nice. I've also discovered this top cover it came with is wrong. It's for a much later one, so it doesn't fit. But I've managed to find one very cheap in America. It looks battered, but 
I could just have to paint it as well. So that's the carb. I won't say rebuild because I didn't actually really change anything in it. It's really just to take apart and clean. But if I had bought the fancy carb kit which came with an easels and jets I could have changed them but they weren't, weren't at all worn so there's really no point. So yeah, looking good and just for your information these are the KC1A carburetors, that actually says KC1AT I guess because that's been punched on because it's the top one. KC1A KC1A I've received now from America two new pistons and a set of rings for the other good pistons. I've just taken this one out and discovered it's actually got needle bearings around the small end bearing which is going to make life slightly more complicated. I think normally what you do is with needle bearings you rub grease round the shaft then roll the shaft onto it to get them all to stick. I can't do that because I've got to put the um, pin through. So I'm going to clean this up, put some grease in there just to stick the pins on, stick the, sorry, needles on, stick the needles on, then I guess that's a new small end shaft in here, stick that through. So I'll do bad fist piston first, then the good piston that has two piston rings, then change the rings and all the rest of them, and then we can hone this block. It's going to need a lot more work on this top one, and I'll just give the rest a quick going over while I'm here, but I can see the cross hatching in them, so they won't need much. So I'll set up the camera and uh, get to it.
I just dropped a load of Anita Warings. It's going to take a little while, so what I do is I'll get all the bearings in and then show you what it looks like when it's done. So that's all the needle bearings in place. And then it just has these two washers either side of the con rod. Then the piston slides over, slide that pin through, that's the old one, and put those C clips in to retain the piston. So, again, I'm going to do this off camera because it's going to be fiddly in a bitch, and it might take more than one go, but I'll show you the results when it's done. So both pistons went on nicely, it's quite fiddly to get the, um, I think it's called gudgeon pin through without knocking the um, pin bearings out. These all feel good apart from this one, this big end bearing feels a bit notchy, so which is. I sprayed it with WD-40, I think there might have just been a bit of dirt in it, so I think that's come free. I took off one piston ring off this, I went to try out the new piston rings I got for it and they have the wrong size, and annoyingly I snapped the old ring, but they weren't changing anyway, so I've got to try and figure out which piston rings these are. These pistons actually came with the rings already on them, so I haven't got the packaging to show what their part number is, but I'll, uh, I think for now, I guess I can move on to, I don't really want to hone this until I've got this assembly ready to go straight in, because I quite like to hone it, oil it, and put it straight together, because it's quite humid, I don't want to, don't want the bores to rust at all, so... I think I'm going to have to get piston rings before I can move on, sadly. I've ordered some piston rings now, and they'll be coming tomorrow, so I'm happy to start honing on the block. First of all, I'm just going to clean out the bores, particularly this end one, where it's had all the uh, metal particulates in it, because that will damage it while we're honing. These other five should actually be perfectly clean, just a little bit oily. I don't know if you can see it, that oil way hasn't drained away, so it's obviously blocked. So once I'm finished honing, I'll um, spray some carb cleaner through that, then leave some oil in it to see if it unblocks. I'm looking at the crankshaft, that goes down. Uh, not the next one, so not a reed bearing, but a one of the uh, main bearings. So this is the one which is going to be horrible. spark plug holes are open at the bottom so the excess carb clean will just drain out.
So this is my honing device. Just keep a jubilee clip round it because it's sprung loaded. I like to hone using automatic transmission fluid or power steering fluid, it's the same thing. You can get proper honing fluid, but I just have it at hand and I found it works well, so I'll just use that. So on these, it's got little porous stones. I don't know what they're actually made of. It's the grinding surfaces, and they're quite absorbent. They soak up quite a lot of transmission fluid. So loads in there. Just right down the bottom. You see how the stones have absorbed the load already. And when we're honing this, you have to be a bit careful when it comes up, not to come past the hinge point or the um, honing stones. Try and flip out, and then there, try and bevel the edge of the board. like that. Thank you. 
So they're all nicely honed out now. The only place where there's a real issue is there's some minor scratches, but nothing deep. That's sorry. that deep scratch on there there's some slight visible ones on the others I don't want to go too mad on the honing but I can't feel them at all I don't think they'll affect the compression so when we get it back together we'll do a compression test I suspect we might still be slightly down on this one but it's going to be better than it was guys thanks a lot for watching um, I think we did pretty well today the carbs certainly look really good uh, the new pistons look fine honing mainly went well uh, piston one still has a bit of a scratch in it ideally we would have bored it out and used oversized piston rings but I don't want to go that far so next episode we will put it all back together maybe do a compression test and see what the results are so thanks a lot for watching once again please subscribe uh, we're going to have some really cool builds coming up, building a uh, little carbon fibre hydroplane, which uh, this engine's going to go on. So, thanks very much for watching, and uh, see you later.